Hello there, and welcome to another Science Saturday. I'm your host, Noah Mugen. I hope you've had an easy, safe September, and we're glad to have you back. Today, we're going to be exploring the science of ripening, and I'm going to quickly go over the materials that we'll be using in today's experiments. Now, don't worry if you don't have all of them, as it's easy to follow along. Today, we'll be using three glass cups, lemon or lime juice, an unripe fruit, an overripe fruit, an apple, a knife, be careful with this, plastic baggies, and water. September is perfect apple picking season. And it's not just because it's it's a tradition to pick apples right now, like it is to put a tree in your living room in the middle of December. No, September is apple picking season because the apples are usually ripe around this time of year. It's not just apples, all other kind of fruits are start to ripen. Now, seeing as it's peak ripening season, we're gonna be going into ripening today. If you didn't know, plants actually want animals to eat their fruit. When an animal eats the fruit of a plant, it'll carry the seeds to another location where the seeds will leave the body and they will be planted in the ground and the plant's lineage will be spread. As such, it's in the best interest of a plant to make its fruit appealing. Originally, most fruits start off green and pretty acidic. However, once they're developed enough, they go through a process called ripening where the acid breaks down to make them make them sweeter, they get softer, and the chlorophyll, which is what causes the green coloring in unripe fruit, breaks down to produce their natural color. And bananas, the green, breaks down into yellow. And fruits actually coordinate their ripening so it all happens at once. When a fruit starts to ripen, it releases a molecule called ethylene. This ethylene travels through the air and tells other fruit that they need to start ripening as well. Those other fruit will start ripening and then they'll release more ethylene and that ethylene will travel to other fruits and cause them to start ripening and on and on and on. This is called a positive feedback loop in which a change, aka the ripening of a fruit, will lead to more of that same change. And in this case, the ripening of other fruits, which then leads to more, even more of that change the ripening of even more fruits. Eventually, this can lead to a whole orchard of apples or something ripening at the same time, in this case being September. You can see the effects of ethylene in action with a simple experiment and some time. All you need are two plastic baggies, the knife, an overripe fruit, and a relatively, relatively unripe fruit. Bananas are best for this since they release a lot of ethylene. Cut up the unripe fruit, ask your parent if you need help, and place a piece in each of the plastic baggies. Now put another piece in one of the baggies, while in the other baggie, put a piece of the overripe fruit. Close them airtight so that the ethylene can't escape from the bananas. And let them sit for a few hours. If you come back later, you should see that the fruit that was placed with its overripe companion is now a much riper than the fruit in the other bag. This this is the fruit that was originally unripe, but now after being placed with the overripe banana, it's much darker than the others, and to the touch, it's much more soft. And the ripening process itself is actually caused by an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase. If you didn't know, enzymes are special proteins used by living organisms to facilitate chemical reactions, which we've covered before. When polyphenol oxidase um, comes in contact with oxygen and certain compounds in plants. It'll catalyze a reaction 
to cause those compounds to incorporate the oxygen into them and break down. Now, polyphenol oxidase can come into contact with oxygen in this way, either when ethylene starts the ripening process or when the skin of the fruit is broken or bruised, like when you hit a banana and suddenly you'll see that spot turn brown. The reason it turns brown is because when polyphenol oxidase oxidizes, in other case, in other words, um, starts a reaction that incorporates oxygen into the compound of, a certain, of that plant, that new compound which is created will be brown, which causes the browning of many fruits when they become overripe. And you can see the effect of polyphenol oxidase with a simple experiment using three cups, lemon or lime juice, an apple, a knife, and some water. So what we have here is a Granny Smith apple. Now it's important to note that even though this apple is green, it's still ripe. Granny Smith apples are special because they don't get as sweet as most fruits do when they ripen. You can still tell that they're ripe by the yellowish or pinkish tinge on it and the brown spots. Not all fruits get, um, stop being green when they ripen. And as you can see, we're gonna see this one ripen or at least some of its slices ripen very soon. Now, you're gonna ask a parent if you need help, cut it up into three slices. And put one slice each in a bowl or a cup. Now, you're gonna put water in this cup, lemon juice in this cup, and leave this cup empty. You're gonna leave these cups out for a couple hours to see how they ripen. Now, coming back a few hours later, let's see how ripe the fruit are. Hmm, the apple that was placed open to the air, it's a lot more brown. It's pretty ripe. Pretty overripe, I should say. Apple in the water? Uh, yeah, it got more brown, although not as much as the apple which was exposed to the air. It's not quite as overripe as that one. Then let's look at the apple which was placed in the lime juice. Oh, it's barely ripe at all. How could that happen? Well, it has to do with how polyphenol oxidase works. If you remember, the enzyme needs oxygen to oxidize the compounds in fruit and make them brown. The apple, which is exposed to the air, had a lot of oxygen to work with. On the contrary, the apple, which was put in the water, didn't have as much oxygen because the water served as a barrier. Some oxygen still got to the apple, of course, but less so. And then, as to the apple in the lime juice, well, it, it browned even less because of a special property of citric acid, which is very common in lime or lemon juice. How citric acid um, how it functions is it's also easily oxidizable. What that means is that citric acid will um, gladly use up any oxygen it comes in contact with. This means that any oxygen which got close to the apple was mostly used up by the lime juice, and so the apple didn't have a ton of oxygen to work with to oxidize and brown. And that's how fruit ripens. The enzyme polyphenol oxidase reacts with oxygen in the air to start the ripening process. And ethylene is then released to cause other fruits to do the same. Well, that about wraps up another Science Saturday. I had fun learning about ripening, and I hope you did too. Stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you next month. Bye-bye!